Hello, my soccer universe. Um, yeah, tomorrow I have a day off, meaning download speed at home not good. So I just finished more or less watching the Europa League goal zone, every all the games. So I know pretty much what happened, but I have not seen by far all the highlights. Uh, but I've seen all the goals and I watched not two highlights of two early games, namely the Salzburg and the uh, Frankfurt games. Because I, of all the action, I missed a little bit of the second half of the earlier um, slot, simply because I was bringing the kids to bed. And yeah, when you bring the kids to bed after a long day of work, I also fall asleep. <laughs> so I missed about 20 minutes there. But yeah, I saw everything else. And it was quite an exciting uh, evening, I have to say. I'm wearing my new Atletico shirt, the one that I got all the stains out. My wife today said she doesn't see any stain anymore. I still do, but you know, I'm quite happy with that. And Atletico had a big win yesterday in the evening, so I was very happy to wear that one. And speaking of Europa League, they're still defending champions. They're not defending the title, but they're still a champion. So I would say let's run through the results. We know already from yesterday, and I said it uh, this morning, uh, Sevilla beat Lazio 2 0, and they already made it to the next round. I'm just gonna run through the results the way they are here and tell you a little bit. And the first result that I see here is Salzburg against uh, Brugge. Um, first game ended with a 2 1 victory for Brugge. So, kind of an iffy result that I actually had the feeling that Salzburg might not do something. I was wrong, although the feeling didn't get much better in the big uh, first. Action, they got the penalty, foul on Daka, and Tabur really made a mess of it. Uh, very central, very weakly shot. That was an easy save for the goalkeeper. Uh, but a little bit later, Schlager with a, um, made it 1-0 in the 17th, and two goals by Daka are uh, really nicely taken with 3-0 at halftime. But at 2-0, Brugge had a huge chance by Wesley. That should have been a goal. I mean, how you cannot put the ball absolutely free how you cannot put the ball on oh, the net is a little bit beyond me but so it's 3-0 at halftime and again with Salzburg you quickly can't give up two goals they have proven that time and time again especially this year against um, uh, Red Star Belgrade where they, sh they potentially had everything in the bag and then they threw it away within a minute uh, although in the, uh, I again have to say in the first game they didn't do much so, yeah, not saying that they didn't deserve uh, or they deserved to move on or didn't deserve, I'm just stating facts. And that's exactly, I think, what everyone was afraid of that uh, Brugge is gonna make another goal. Uh, and yeah, they had their chances, not huge chances, but Salzburg kind of needed to put in some extra work. Uh, I think uh, their goalkeeper saved twice really, really well. And then uh, in the last 10 minutes, they had numerous chances, mainly overcoming over Minamino. And in the end, Tabur makes it 4-0. Uh, the result probably much clearer than the game actually was. But it has to be said that right before the 4-0, the Salzburg goalkeeper made a save where he really scratched the ball off the line. So that was uh, the end result. Salzburg is through. Uh, so at least from the Austrian perspective, we got a win, which is very important for um, the ranking in the leagues. Next game, Zagreb against Victoria Pilsen. Uh, the first game was won by Pilsen, 2-1. Now Zagreb uh, doesn't waste much time, makes it 3-0. I think it was over 2-0 at halftime, exactly. Orsic, uh, Dilaver, Petkovic in the 73rd. Make it 3 0. So Zagreb is through. Didn't see much of that. Napoli already won in Zurich 3 1. Now they make it 2 0. I think uh, the first goal was by yeah, Verdi. Napoli playing more or less with a reserve squad. Uh, yeah, glorified reserve squad. Uh, Verdi making it 1 0. And uh, Kunas makes it 2 0. So easy moving on for Napoli. Uh, Via Real only won one at home to Sporting Lisbon, but uh, Lisbon, I'm saying it in a German way, um, but they won already uh, in Lisbon, so there you go. The game, 
I wish I would have seen the highlights here because I see the game actually was quite so, um, exciting. Just before halftime, uh, Sporting gets the 1 0, but they get a player sent off in the 50th and then in the 80th for Naish. Uh, makes it 1 1 and puts Villarreal uh, through, meaning. You know, another Spanish team today at work with discussion, which is the which is the strongest league. And I said, Barnan, it's uh, La Liga. I mean, they just get consistently teams in the next round. Although today, we'll see, there was one uh, exception. Arsenal uh, beats Bata 3 0, was to be expected. I mean, they got an early goal and then um, 2 0 at halftime. Um, so while it was an own goal, uh, Mustafi makes it 2-0, uh, the 39th, and Socrates in the 60th makes it 3-0 for Arsenal. And then Frankfurt against Schachter. That was actually the game. If I would have had to pick a single one, that probably would have been the one that I would have chosen, because already the first game was a very interesting one, and it 2-2, with Schachter playing for 80 minutes with 10 men, and uh, was kind of frantic. And this game started similarly. Um, first of all, horrible jerseys and i knew it from the front from the beginning i don't like the current frankfurt home jersey it's just too much black for me frankfurt is a red and black not just black so that i didn't like and then basically schachter plays in the same jersey but instead of the black with uh gray stripes they have beige gray with some darker uh, gray specks and then some orange socks and highlights I hated the colors, but the match itself uh, lived up to the billing. Um, it was very even until Jovic uh, was free, makes it 1-0, and shortly thereafter Frankfurt actually gets a penalty, um, which Ala Aller converts. It was one of those uh, handball, you know, uh, shot and the ball hits the hand. I understand it's game. I still don't like those. I mean, uh, the ball goes so fast. What shall you do? Honestly. But yeah, okay. So 27 minutes in, it was 2 0 for Frankfurt. In the second half, Schachter comes out storming. Um, and that's exactly what, what I was expecting. The Schachter is a really, really strong team that can give anyone in Europe trouble. And that's exactly what they did. Um, they had chances, they hit the bar twice, uh, Moresh made it 2-1 uh, in the 63rd, the bars came uh, afterwards, and it was a really, really, really exciting game, and at that moment, um, you know, right after 2-2-1, Schrift Schachter would have equalized, it would have been well deserved, and the game uh, was threatening to go to overtime. Of course, Schachter committed more men forward, and in that case, Alea made it in a wonderful move, 3-1, and then Rebic shortly thereafter. Kills off the game with 4-1, but that was everything but that easy. Uh, the final result with Leeds now 6-3 overall score for Frankfurt. Frankfurt is a very offensively minded squad, but that game was by far not as straightforward as you would think. Uh, Valencia Celtic, uh, Valencia already 2 0 win in Glasgow. Uh, Celtic had actually many chances in the first half, uh, but then a player gets sent off with a yellow red, uh, which is. Let me read this. Tolian. I hope I read this right. It's just too small and I, I don't have my glasses at, at, at the moment. And from that moment on, I guess it uh, everything was over. I hate the uh, Celtic away kids, the neon ones. Um, Gamero makes in 70th, 1 0. Valencia scoring at home in the left goal, which is something I don't see on the weekends. So Valencia is through, another Spanish team, mind you. Zenit was up 2-0 very quickly. They lost, of course, the first game against Fenerbahce, 1-0. A game they should have lost by 2 or 3. Uh, Fenerbahce gets the uh, vital away goal and really looks like they could uh, move on. But then Asmun makes it 3-1 for Zenit and Zenit goes through. Luckily, one has to say, if you consider the first game, um, this should have been Fenerbahce's. Uh, sorry to say, but yeah. If you cannot keep it together and if you cannot make chances, you're not going to advance. So we have uh, Zenit going through. And then we are already at the early, early games. I mean, Inter, Rapid Vienna, I'm not going to say much. I mean, 4-0, it was after 20 minutes. 2-0, Rapid had next to no chance. The only thing that's uh, remarkable is both teams played in their wage kits. 
which I hate it. It's white against uh, red with blue pants for Rapid. Uh, the home game for Rapid, where they both played in the first kits, not really, because Rapid played in the third kit, the white with green and white stripes. Um, but that looks like a, the classic, if you say Inter against Rapid, this is how I would imagine it being played. Not like they played today. Um, the one thing is the third goal by Perisic, um, absolutely worth watching. Uh, the goals for Inter, just for complete sake, uh, by Vecino, Ranocchia, Perisic, that's the one, if you see highlights, that's one really worth watching, and then Politano makes it 4-0. Um, yeah, what can you say? Uh, and then, the if the late games had actually three surprises, and the first one came uh, Betis against Rennes. If you remember the first game, Rennes had a 2-0 and a 3-1 lead before it ended 3-3. And Betis is a, in the, also in a little bit of a funk. And today I was joking, I thought that Betis will move on and it would be really great if they could play Sevilla. That would have been a perfect game. No, we are not going to get that. Um, Bernabe and Uno, Uno made it 2-0. Um, quite convincingly so. Of course, Lesel, so in the 41st, pulls one back, so the game is right on the edge. And Betis is committing numbers forward, and Ren is trying to get the third goal that probably at least would have guaranteed them overtime, because it is, was so weird. If it's 2 2, thanks to the 3 3 away, Betis would have would, won, so they have one goal, goal away, but in the 94th, Niang kills off the game. I wish I would have seen more of that game, to be honest, but we, as, as we'll see, there was another exciting game that, unfortunately, since I'm using a German-slash-Austrian streaming service, they put uh, the focus on German-slash-Austrian uh, games. Therefore, I didn't see too much, but that seemed to be a very exciting game. Uh, potentially the best of the evening, uh, with all the stakes and uh, free scoring goals. And Ren has the biggest success, and yeah, Niang, I still remember him for hitting the post in Barcelona in 2012 in the Champions League in a quarterfinal. I am convinced, or was it 2013? Probably 2013. Um, it was still it was Champions League, yeah, but um, this was uh, when Milan had won the 2-0. Uh, it was 1-0 Barcelona at that point. If Niang makes that goal, I am absolutely convinced that Milan moves on. So it ended for nil for Barca with two messy penalties. Uh, still a little, little bit bitter about it. Um, I wish that Nyang was still with Milan, honestly. I, I actually liked him. But yeah, this is the big thing for Milan was his miss. Dinamo Kiev beats Olympiakos Piraeus. Uh, it was a 2-2 um, in the first game where I think uh, Olympiakos took did equalized was I don't remember exactly, but uh, was a was 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 a pretty good game. Um, Dynamo. I only saw the goal, which was well taken. Um, so that goes through. Benfica um, dominates the game, doesn't get a goal. Galatasaray has no shot on goal. Nil nil. So Benfica having one two one in Istanbul moves on. This was actually this is a Champions League game. <laughs> Uh, Chelsea has a lot of trouble with Malmö. Uh, Malmö actually had two or three good chances in the first half, but in the end Chelsea runs away uh, with it scoring three goals by Giroud, Barkley with a nice uh, free kick, and then Hudson Adoy gets it. Um, only a slim breathing room for Sarri, um, I think, by Sunday. He might be out. I don't see Chelsea winning against Manchester City. And then two more uh, surprising results. Henk against Slavia Prague. Uh, first game ended nil-nil, and very quickly Henk takes a one-nil lead uh, due to a goalkeeping error. The next two goals are also goalkeeping errors, but now they are by the Be Belgian goalkeeper. Uh, it was 1-1 at the half. And then uh, Traoré, Škoda and Škoda make it 4-1 for Slavia. As soon as they had the 2-1 all Hell broke loose, and Slavia Prague moves on. This is a big surprise, one has to say. Um, I'm sure that many people will want to play Slavia, but you know, you beat the first place team from Belgium, the, the one that's running away with the league at the moment. That's a big statement win, and um, 
I'm kind of happy because Slavia is uh, it's such a classic Czech team. It's one of the big boys in 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 Czechia, so I'm I'm quite happy to see them be su successful. And then Leverkusen against Krasnodar. This was the tensest game of all of them. First game ended nil nil. Leverkusen having more of the game, Krasnodar having huge chances, and it continued in the same vein. Uh, it was a, it seemed a little bit like a heavyweight fight uh, with two a little bit clumsy but very willing opponents. Leverkusen has more of the game, but Krasnodar was super well adjusted and should have taken the lead uh, in the first first half. I think Klaasson had a free shot on goal, uh, didn't make anything of it. So yeah, um, it goes in the uh, second half and you could see that Krasnodar, who invested a lot, is getting more tired. But Leverkusen somehow wasn't well a well-adjusted team and had a hard time going forward. And you always had the danger of um, Krasnodar running a counter-attack. And in the end, uh, Krasnodar gets a free kick close to, uh, to, to the edge of the box. Um, something that hasn't happened all evening for either team. And um, Suleimanov, who was just substituted in for, um, let's see, who, who Ignatiev, who worked tirelessly. I saw actually quite some of that game and uh, it was a really, really, really interesting game. Really. Um, but uh, uh, Suleimanov takes the free kick wonderfully taken. Uh, I mean, the commentators say that a uh, player should, should have jumped, but if I look at it, the more, even if they would have jumped, it would have cleared the wall and it really made internet. 84th minute. And at that point, you gotta say it, uh, it was already a steep ask for Leverkusen. They needed two goals. They got a quick one through Aranguiz and suddenly they were threatening and they had chances. I think there was one by Bailey uh, that should have been in. Uh, even the Radetzky, the goalkeeper, came out. So Leverkusen had their chances to make it 2-1, but in the end they didn't manage. And Krasnodar, the third uh, surprise of the evening, moves on. And yeah, we have two Russian teams in the next round. So very, very, very interesting results. Uh, let, let's go through the teams that are through once more. Sevilla, Salzburg. Dinamo Zagreb, Napoli, Villarreal, Arsenal, Eintracht Frankfurt, Valencia, Zenit St. Petersburg, Inter, uh, Rennes, Dinamo Kiev, Benfica, Chelsea, Slavia, and Krasnodar. It's going to be an interesting draw tomorrow. And as, as far as I know, it's a free draw, so anything can happen. And yeah, uh, I'm a little bit... You know, if you ask me that one team that I would like to win is probably Napoli. I think the biggest name team in the competition is Inter. The most dangerous team is Sevilla. Sevilla, that's there. That's there. Uh, we have Arsenal and Chelsea in there. That's going to be interesting. But we also have a, a slew of underdogs in there. And from an Austrian perspective, I'm curious who Salzburg will play. I have to say that Salzburg will fancy themselves against almost any opponent. Maybe not the Sevilla or something like that, but every, everything else, they like their chances. But yeah, I'll give you my reaction on the draw tomorrow uh, in the afternoon, meaning if you watch it, uh, since this will post tomorrow, you will see it today in the afternoon and there we, uh, you will see my reaction to the draw. Anyway, let me know which games you watched, what you thought about the games. Uh, I thought it was really exciting. The only thing that was missing was that there was no overtime. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.